The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds, or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with a New Year holiday special. It was on New Year's Day in 1831 that William Lloyd Garrison's first issue of his great anti-slavery publication, The Liberator, contained this fiery sentence. I am in earnest. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. I will not retreat one single inch. And I will be heard. Thirty-two years later came the fruition of that dedication in President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, which made that New Year's Day and every New Year's Day since then particularly meaningful. And that proclamation of freedom was issued exactly 128 years after one of the most famous messengers of freedom, Paul Revere, was born. But the greatest freedom of all is a freedom superseding even the liberation from slavery or foreign domination. It is the spiritual freedom from fear and guilt enshrined in these 12 immortal words. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth is that you are a son or daughter of the living God, and in that is life and joy and newness on this New Year's Day. With fanfare and flourish, the new year opens throughout the world on January 1st. It's a gay and festive time marked by family dinners, open houses, and all the exhilaration that goes with the beginning of a new adventure in time. Sweep out the old, sweep in the new, the poets have written. Long ago in England, when the hourglass of time was turned at midnight and the sands of time ran down into a bright new glass, celebrants threw open all the doors and windows of their homes on New Year's Eve so that the spirit of the old year could slip out and the spirit of the new year could come in from the cold outside and warm itself by the fire. Somebody said to a man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. God has a will for your life, and it is a good and a joyous purpose. Declared the master of masters, I have come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. The joy of finding and knowing the living God. The wisdom in this statement of Abraham Lincoln's applies well to the new year which lies before you. Having chosen our course without guile and with pure purpose, let us renew our trust in God and go forward without fear. Said Jesus, fear not, be not anxious, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he said, my peace I give to you. He said, Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, he said, and be exceedingly glad. Listen to those ringing, resonant words. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. One poet wrote, I am the new year, a blank sheet of paper on which to write the great American novel or paint an immortal masterpiece. Or just let me remain blank. I am a newly minted coin to be spent foolishly in a day or invested in happy plans for a lifetime. I am twelve shining months, which can be your stairway to the stars or a dead-end street to oblivion. I am the new year, 365 days in which to make a dream come true, a fresh start. So make the most of me. Hold me tightly to your heart. Or let me slip through your careless fingers like the sands of time. I am the new year. Give this new year, which lies before you this moment, give this new year to God. And God will give it back to you far better than you ever could have made it by yourself. 
For what shall it profit a man, said Jesus, if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? And he said, Be not content to lay up your treasure upon the earth where moth and rust corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. No, he said, Lay up your treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And your heart will be filled with the gladness and the spiritual joy of knowing God and knowing that God has a plan and a purpose for this planet and a will for the living of your life each moment and for all eternity, fearless of life and fearless of death. But there is an immense satisfaction in the overcoming of such fear. It is in the mastering of fear that you attain to courage. Indeed, such courage might well be impossible without the fear to conquer, for the courage is in the conquest of fear. Each fear you possess is but another opportunity for courage, each doubt but a possibility for faith, each hatred the potentiality of the learning of love, but the choice is yours. For courage is simply fear which has said its prayers. And fear, F-E-A-R, spells false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. The great psychologist Dr. William S. Sadler said, The only known cure for fear is faith. Have faith in God, said Jesus. He rebuked his followers, saying to them, O you of little faith. And he said, According to your faith, so shall it be to you. Many a human being wishes he or she could run away from troubles to some far, remotely distant land where life is elementary and the July editions of the magazines don't arrive until November, far away from the panorama of problems in the world. But it requires a lifetime for some people to learn that the largest problems are not in the world but in ourselves, within us as human beings, if we've not found a power and a purpose larger than ourselves for the living of life. Many a person is seeking to find himself, and when he does, is going to be highly disappointed because the genuine joy of life lies not merely in finding yourself, but in finding your God and living as the son or the daughter of God you were born and created to be and within yourself as you really long to live. This feels right. Living with a sense of kinship to your creator as a brother or sister to all of humankind, infinitely valuable and realizing that a fragment of infinity, a spark of divinity, an ember of eternity indwells your mortal mind to illumine your life, to inspire and stimulate your mind, your thinking, your heart and your soul. To a young child, reaching out to God, prayer may mean a red sled under the bed at birthday time, the asking for something physical and receiving it in turn. But Jesus emphasized spiritual values, faith, hope, love, patience, service. Pray rather for these things, truth and beauty and goodness, and a growing love for God and love for humanity. Jesus said, fear not, be not anxious. First thing tomorrow morning, Walk up to your best friend in a positive tone of voice. Declare to him you have decided to give up being nervous. Tell him you're going to repudiate anxiety. Tell him you'll give him $100 if he'll just agree to do all your worrying for you. And if he agrees and asks you where the $100 are, tell him that's his first worry. Worry is simply useless. It is futile. Worry is from the old Anglo-Saxon meaning to strangle. It is strangling yourself emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually, to live in worry. Becoming distraught with life is never a real solution. You need a calm and clear mind to meet your troubles. In honest prayer, then, ask God to help you to master worry. And then, in faith, begin to live in a new courage and a new spiritual vitality. Listen to this old recipe for having a happy new year. Take 12 fine, full-grown months. See that these are thoroughly free from old memories of bitterness, rancor, hate, and jealousy. Cleanse them completely from every clinging spite. Pick off all specks of pettiness and littleness. In short, see that these months are freed from all the past. Have them as fresh and clean as when they first came from the great storehouse of time. Cut these months 
into 30 or 31 equal parts. This batch will keep for just one year. Do not attempt to make up the whole batch at one time. So many people spoil the entire lot this way. Prepare one day at a time as follows. Into each day put 12 parts of faith, 11 of patience, 10 of courage, 9 of work, 8 parts of hope, 7 of fidelity, 6 of liberality, 5 of kindness, 4 of rest. Leaving this out is like leaving the oil out of the salad. 3 parts of prayer, 2 of meditation, and one well-selected resolution. Then put in about a teaspoonful of good spirits, a dash of fun, a pinch of folly, a jigger of laughter, a sprinkling of play, and a heaping cup full of good humor. Cook thoroughly with a fervent heat. Garnish with a few smiles and a sprig of joy. And then serve with quietness, unselfishness, and cheerfulness. And a happy new year will be a certainty. Begin that recipe today, New Year's Day. The Apostle Paul has written, Be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And he said, Know you not that you are the temple of God, for the Spirit of God dwells within you. And there's a poem. He came to my desk with quivering lips. His lesson was done. Have you a new page for me, dear teacher? I've spoiled this one. I took his page, all soiled and blotted, and gave him a new one, all unspotted. And to his childish heart I smiled, Do better now, my child. I went to the throne. The year was done. Have you a new year for me, good father? I've spoiled this one. He took my year, all soiled and blotted, and gave me a new year, all unspotted, and to my tired heart smiled, Do better now, my child. And so your good and loving Father God now speaks to you. Last year is done. This one is new. Do better now, my child. Said Jesus of Nazareth, with God, all things are possible. Happy New Year. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics, if you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vernon Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.